Napa Valley wines. It's the most famous wine region in the US and it's known all around the world. Napa wines are in general the most expensive wines in the US. It is the upper crust of the US wine scene. And I wanted to kind of talk about why that is. Why is Napa super, super expensive? In order to answer that question, let's do a little history lesson. So let's bring it all the way back to 1600s. The first people to grow grapes in California were the Spanish missionaries. They were growing it for their churches. It was not that sophisticated, not really noteworthy. Then fast forward to the 1850s, because of the gold rush, there were Italian and French immigrants who came to California and began planting European vines. By the 1880s, they had a thriving wine industry. And then it was a series of unfortunate events for 70, 80 years. This root killing insect called phylloxera came from Europe, basically decimated all of the vines. So they were replanting all that. And then prohibition hits. A lot of wineries had to close because they couldn't sell alcohol. So prohibition, then the Great Depression hits, no bueno. And then we had World War II. So just, they couldn't catch a break. It wasn't until the 1960s, 1970s, these newcomers came to California. Among those was the Mondavi family. So Robert Mondavi. And Robert Mondavi is pretty famous. You could probably have seen his wines in grocery stores. His name is synonymous with Napa Valley because at the time in the 70s, no one really cared too much about California wines. They were a nobody. Back then it was all about European wines, especially French. The French wines were the ones who commanded the higher prices and the prestige in the wine world. So Robert Mondavi, to anyone who would listen, he's like, guys, California is the next hot place for wine, Napa Valley, our wine's amazing. And a lot of people were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever. And it wasn't until 1976, the judgment in Paris. And that was a turning point for California wines. The Judgment in Paris was an event where these renowned French judges blind tasted French wines versus California wines. The outcome was that the California Cabernet Sauvignon from Stag's Leap and the Mont Helena Chardonnay both got first place, beating out the famous high-end Bordeaux and Burgundy wines. And the French were pissed. They were shocked. They didn't know what to do. They were like, I cannot believe this happened. So they were just really embarrassed. And from that point on, Napa Valley, you know, shot up and became a world-renowned wine growing region. Let's get into what makes Napa Valley so unique and it's the climate and the geography. Napa Valley is really small, like tiny in comparison to Bordeaux. The reason why Bordeaux is always compared with Napa is because Bordeaux is famous for Cabernets and Merlots. And Napa, one of their main grapes is Cabernet. So they always get pitted together, but they're very, very different. The style is very different. And also Bordeaux just produces a lot more wine, like seven times more wine. It's tiny in person. It's 30 miles long, five miles wide, 45, 50 miles north of San Francisco. What's cool about it is that the fog from the bay gets funneled up through the valley at night. The temperatures can get down to 40 degrees. And then during the day, the sun dissipates the fog and in the valley can get up to like 80, 90 degrees. They call this diurnal fluctuation. It sounds really fancy, but basically it's just large temperature shifts. And that's really good for the grapes because it helps it ripen and preserves the acidity in the grapes. The climate is ideal for wine growing. It's dry, Mediterranean climate. It's just a really good place to grow grapes and you can grow a lot of different variety of grapes. Part of that reason is because you got canyons, you got valleys, you got mountains. And if you go through Napa, 
there's all these curves and turns and bends. And so somebody one mile away can produce a very different wine because maybe they get more sun, maybe it's a little bit cooler. All these factors change the grapes and contribute to different wines. I also wanna talk about AVAs and labeling requirements because that kind of provides a little bit more information later of what makes a Napa wine a Napa wine. AVA stands for American Viticulture Area. It's just like area. Just think of AVA as an area. You'll see Napa Valley and Napa Valley is the AVA. And what that means is that 85% of the grapes that are in this bottle have to be grown in Napa Valley. Now, if it doesn't have an AVA on it and just has like a county or a state on it, then 75% of the grapes have to come from that area because it's not an AVA. Now, the kind of confusing thing is that within Napa Valley, there are 16 AVAs, sub-AVAs. Basically, it's just a smaller area, so it's just a stricter guideline. All the other rules are exactly the same. But because it comes from a smaller area, typically it's a little bit more expensive. Now that we've talked about history, climate, geography, and wine labeling laws, let's discuss why are Napa wines so expensive? Part of that reason is, like I said, it's the history, it's the prestige, it's basically the US's version of a Bordeaux. And Bordeaux in France is a highly esteemed, expensive wine region. So it's our version of that. The other thing is because of the unique geography and, and ideal climate, land there's just really, really expensive. So in order for a winemaker to make money, the average Cabernet Sauvignon is about $40. Is it worth it? I think Napa wines are worth it because they're just consistent year over year. You know what you're gonna get and most times, I, I would say in the past five years, the only year that might be not as great, but still pretty good is 2017. And that's from the wildfires. We'll see how 2020 shakes out. But in general, very, very consistent, very, very good wine. So if you're paying $40, $50 for a bottle of wine, chances are very high that it's a pretty good bottle. Whereas if you spent $40, $50 on a Bordeaux, you don't really know. If you know the producer and you have done a little bit of research on years, you know, you can definitely find some really great Bordeaux, but you, you just have to do a little bit more digging. In Bordeaux, the weather changes year to year. Some years gets too much rain, some years gets hail, and California is just very consistent. In general, Napa wines have very good structure. They're rich, they're powerful, very fruit forward. Now, what about budget wines or wines that don't meet that cutoff? What's going on with them? Are you saying oh, cheaper Napa wines aren't good? No, that's not true. I'm just saying that just like be careful. There could be some people who are just using the name to produce their wines, but they're not very good producers. Today I'm drinking a Bonanno Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon 2016. I got this at slightly a discount. I was like kind of searching around. So I got this bottle for $23. So this one says Cabernet Sauvignon on it. So 75% of the grapes in here have to be Cabernet Sauvignon. So I did a little bit of research. This producer is just above that 75%. This tells me that it's a Bordeaux blend because those grapes are four out of the seven grapes that can be grown in Bordeaux and they'll call that a Bordeaux blend. 85% of the grapes have to be from Napa Valley. I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of these grapes are from outside of Napa Valley. Of course, they wouldn't advertise that, but that's why I'm just saying, just for like the bargain Napa Valleys, just be aware that some of the grapes could be grown outside the valley. They might not even tell you what the other grapes are. This producer had the breakdown, but sometimes you won't know that this is actually a blend and not 100% varietal. Napa wines are definitely a good choice for a special occasion, but it's definitely not an everyday drinking wine. It's way too expensive for an everyday drinking wine. If you want to treat yourself, yeah, go get yourself a Napa, Napa wine. Cheers.